Hello, and welcome to this podcast. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Ernesto Falcon. Ernesto is Senior Legislative Counsel at the Electronic Frontier Foundation, EFF, with a primary focus on intellectual property, open internet issues, broadband access, and competition policy. In the US, his work includes pushing the state of California to pass the strongest net neutrality law in the country in response to federal repeal efforts. Okay, Ernesto, you know about your challenge. Telling us what, if anything, is wrong with the European Commission consultation on the future of telecoms and connectivity. Thank you. Thank you for that. The, the thing about internet access, uh, how it used to be in the past, uh, how much has changed, and you know, what the consultation gets, gets wrong as a, as a foundational premise, um, you know, really stems from, I think, my, what my research has shown and what, what the trajectory of the infrastructure is doing is the future is abundance uh, at lowering cost. And, and I'll explain why. So one of my projects at the, the Electronic Frontier Foundation was to you know, research uh, various models uh, that are designed around getting everyone fiber optic connectivity to the internet. And, and why fiber optics is, is real is real clear from an engineering uh, technical standpoint, and, and we had our engineers kind of do this research. Is um, this is the kind of wireline access, the kind of infrastructure that will deliver not just the internet that's ready for today, but the internet that will be ready for decades, uh, simply because the unique principles behind the the wire itself, the fiber optic wire, it's essentially a, a glass pipe is that you are going to be able to rely on the cost-effective uh, improvements in hardware. So the switches and routers that you connect to the, to the wires to transfer, transmit the information of the internet um, is going to continue to improve and the price and cost will be stable once you've laid that wire out there. So we, we've been uh, emphasizing to policymakers uh, here in the United States and, and around the world that the future of the internet, 21st century access, is is a fiber-based internet. Uh, a number of, of countries have understood that for a while. Uh, China, for example, is connecting uh, fiber optics to to all of its residents. Uh, South Korea has already transitioned over to all fiber for its uh, internet infrastructure. And one of the the biggest changes that will come from that transition, and, and a number of European uh, Union member states have made this transition or or on their way to near ubiquitous deployment is, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, abundance of capacity at lowering cost. So the premise behind the fair share debate uh, and the idea that it costs a lot of money to deploy this and it costs a lot of money to run the internet um, are very faulty because what, what it actually is, is that it, 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 the cost, the, the, the payment or the, the things that the network operators have to um, rationalize and pay for is the deployment of the wire that's a one-time cost and uh, if done right it shouldn't require any sort of replacement cost in the future potentially for for the remainder of the century uh if done right the, you know there are fiber optic wires that i know about um from from broadband providers i've spoken with that were laid uh 40 50 years ago so this is kind of older technology but still the same kind of glass high capacity wire um, that they use today, that handles the internet today, but delivers the gigabit and beyond speeds today. And, um, and so I think it calls into question, and there's, a, there's an actually an excellent study by uh, a Analyst Mason that broke down this, this trajectory. ISPs that are laying their new networks are actually reducing their overall uh, ongoing costs, their operations costs, because the efficiencies that are in those wires, uh, despite the fact we're all using much more internet every day, we're going to be using, on average, 21% more bandwidth, more data per year, every year, for likely forever. Um, despite that constant growth, the cost of running um, those access lines is dropping and dropping fast, uh, you know, saving totals in the totals of billions of dollars. So, you know, I, I actually think we are, the discussion's in the, on the wrong foot. We, we shouldn't be thinking about how do we pay more to make this work. Uh, we actually should be thinking about how to pay less in the long run. Uh, I, I actually think there is a future where if we transition all of our networks over to kind of 21st century infrastructure, that we can talk about free internet access for, for people who have no money. Uh, and in the, 
the incremental cost on a provider to to provide those free access points is almost zero. So um, the efficiencies are real. Uh, the premise that we have to figure out how to pay extra to maintain and run the internet is is faulty uh, at, at its foundation. And I think that's most concerning with with um, the direction of this consultation, simply because it ignores, I think, realities of engineering and, and economics that are that are actually occurring today. Thank you, Ernesto. Um, I, I, I certainly think that um, users will enjoy the idea of free internet for those who can't afford uh, the paying uh, internet. But what I what I take from this is that with the switch to fiber, we are looking at a one-time cost to lay the fiber, but then the running the internet over the fiber is actually cheaper than on older technologies or older networks. Uh, and that um, instead of doing a, a consultation that seems to be uh, based on old models, let's say, of, of telecoms networks, we should be looking at the future, and the future is one of abundance and decreasing costs uh, for those telcos that are willing to be efficient, let's put it that way. The network is more efficient in the future. Now it's up to the telco to be more efficient in the future. Thank you so much for uh, laying that out. And I think it, it is good that the experience of the US and the international experience from other geographies come into this conversation so that we see where it's going right. Uh, South Korea might not be a good example but uh, where fiber is being laid and where clearly the costs are reducing for the telcos. Thank you and have a great day.